Stop right there. So Wait. Hillary, this is a state that Barack Obama won in 2008. Well, yeah. Barack Obama won in 2008 and 2012. Hillary Clinton now losing to Jeb by 11, losing to Donald Trump by 5, and losing to Carly Fiorina by 14 I, points. Mike Barnacle, let's just stop right there. I don't know that I, Carly is, is having an incredible run, but I think this is about Carly, but a lot of it is about Hillary Clinton. Well, it's caution versus authenticity. Uh, you know, Carly Fiorina, no matter what you might think about her business career, what you, whatever challenges you might present to her about that career, right. she comes across as prepared and authentic. Mm -hmm. And Hillary Clinton comes across as extremely cautious, a cautious candidate. Hugh Hewitt had perhaps the most apt description of Hillary Clinton's candidacy that I've yet heard. The She's campaign. like someone who has been involved in 20 automobile accidents behind the wheel of a car. And she loses by 11 points to Jeb Bush, a guy who is constantly being ripped apart by the media for his failing campaign. But we're talking about Iowa. We're not talking about Alabama here. We're talking about a purple to blue leaning state. Yeah, it's a swing state. Look, it's one state. Um, we should say that, right? Well, but New Hampshire's still, another, yeah, which yeah, will New Hampshire next. So, so it's just fascinating to me, though, that, that if, if the argument for her is, well, she's having a hard time now, but, you know, kind of later on, we're going to honor the general. This is going to hurt that. It hurts that argument. All right, so we've got uh, that. Now looking at how uh, Senator Bernie Sanders stacks up. Sanders defeats Donald Trump in Iowa, while he narrowly loses to both Jeb Bush and Fiorina, who also yeah. performs best against Sanders among her Republican and, opponents. And Nick, you, that just made your point, which yeah. is you can no longer say that Hillary Clinton is the sar smart, safe general election opponent because she does very poorly with independence. Mm -hmm. And we saw these numbers with Biden a couple of weeks ago, but now it's Bernie, yeah. the socialist Democrat, that is scaring yeah. much better people against been, Republicans People have been asking for weeks, who can beat Donald Trump? Who can take him down? There's your answer. It's wow. Bernie Sanders. In New Hampshire, Clinton trails Jeb Bush by five points while defeating Donald Trump by one. At the same time, and this is kind of an interesting dynamic, Vice President Joe Biden does better, losing to Bush by only one point and ahead of Trump by nine. The the, same, the, okay. Yeah, no, I was going to say, though, there, there also, though, Mika, is Carly Fiorina. I think we saw a line, Carly Fiorina beating Hillary Clinton by eight points yeah. in New Hampshire. Yep. Again, Mike, another state that is more Democratic than Republican in presidential election years. You know, part of it reminds me of the, a great book about Hollywood written by Bill Goldman, the great screenwriter, Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid, All the President's Men, stuff like that. The title of his book is Nobody Knows Nothing. Right. And looking at these numbers, I mean, uh, I think I'm one of those yeah. people. Nobody knows nothing. And we I mean, have a the, truck riding on that. The, the, yeah, we do have <laughs> we a truck a riding. The, the ebbs and flows. New Hampshire is really interesting in what's going on up there. We had Mark Halpern on earlier today. And part of Bernie's surge in New Hampshire, fine, you can attribute part of it, a small part of it, to the fact that he's from Vermont. They know him. But the biggest element is his authenticity and his belief in the message. He's consistent. Uh, look at the crowd that he drew over the weekend in Boston right there. You're looking at it over, you know, largest crowd in, in years since Gene McCarthy. 20,000 people yeah. and a lot of young people standing outside that couldn't get in. Yeah. And it's, it, it's because of his message. It's not because he's the most charismatic guy in the race, clearly. Uh, but his message rings true. Nick spoke to this earlier. He's speaking to a group of people, many of them in college, probably get out of college, saddled with him between fifty and a hundred thousand dollars in debt, and they come from homes where the parents haven't gotten a pay raise in fifteen or twenty years. And so it resonates. Look ripple. The ripple effect is enormous with Bernie Sanders. So twenty thousand people this. there, and look at the crowds outside during the speech. So the same poll shows also shows Bernie Sanders maintaining his lead over Hillary Clinton in New Hampshire. He's still ahead by nine points in the first of the nation primary state. And when Vice President Joe Biden is included as an option in the poll, Sanders' lead jumps 
to 14 points. Biden is also having a similar effect on the numbers in Iowa. Without him included as an option, Hillary Clinton leads Sanders by 11 points, 47 percent to 36. But when the vice president is included, her lead over Sanders in Iowa falls to five points. And it was also a record-breaking weekend for Sanders in Massachusetts. We showed you the uh, crowd of more than 20,000 people who turned out to see him speak at the Boston Convention and Exhibition Center on Saturday. Look at that crowd. The Boston Globe reports it's the largest rally for a presidential primary candidate in recent state history, topping, doubling the 10,000 people. Obama drew to the Boston Common back in 2008. And a few thousand didn't even make it inside, watching on screens set up in an overflow area. Earlier in the day, in Springfield, Massachusetts, Sanders drew a crowd of about 6,000. There, he addressed the way the media is reacting to last week's announcement that his campaign raised $26 million in the third quarter. They want to know how does it happen that 650,000 Americans have made well over a million individual contributions in this campaign. So I'm proud to tell you that our campaign is a different type of campaign. It is a grassroots campaign designed not only to elect someone to be president of the United States, but to build a political movement. And that's what this is. And a political movement he is building. I had somebody early on in my political career tell me, yeah, you know what, the $2,000 checks, those are great. Get somebody to give you $10, and they're invested. Yep. Just as much or even more than the person that writes you a $2,000 check. Mm -hmm. And that, Nick, is what you've said is yeah. happening here. We tried to compare it to Barack Obama, but you say this is even more grassroots than Barack Obama. So Obama combined small donors and big donors, essentially, right? He had the grassroots part. It worked well for him. Sanders is all small donor money, almost every cent of it. It's people who give $10 and then give again the next month and keep giving over and over again. They are highly invested in the campaign. Look and they are foot soldiers. Can't, They're also foot soldiers. It. And it goes with his message. He says, I hate the billionaires. I don't want their money. Right? It's, it's, it, it goes with the message and the medium and the guy and the raising all is unified mike this is a u2 concert the, what, you i know, mean uh, you're showing the vo it really yeah. is this is twenty thousand people jammed going in. crazy twenty thousand on a rainy twenty thousand inside dark, cold day. And maybe another twenty five hundred to five thousand outside six to seven thousand in springfield massachusetts ninety miles away to the west from boston it's highly reminiscent to me of the gene mccarthy campaign in the spring of nineteen sixty eight both campaigns were waged against a war. The war in Vietnam in 1968 with Gene McCarthy and the war against the existing economic system this, this, this winter, this, this fall and this winter. And both have drawn, attracted, and kept a huge, huge base of 